No craft beer this time. The hard liquor's out. The tasty ingredients are queued up. So you know what time it is. It's time to infuse the booze. And what kind of booze infusion are we going to make today? We're going to make our own homemade Kahlua. And it's going to be flavorful, high ABV Kahlua. Regular Kahlua clocks in about 26.5% ABV, if memory serves. This homemade version that DJ is going to put together for you here is going to clock in at 40% ABV. We're going to use a whole bottle of vodka and over a cup and a half of dark rum. So, what do we got for ingredients in this? Let's start out with our dry ingredients list. I've already pre-loaded it into our sanitized gallon jug because who wants to watch me pour ingredients into a jug? Fun, right? No, not really. So, first thing up, we have a cup and a half of raw turbinado sugar. I use that because I like the flavor of it. I brewed with a bunch of times and I've made this before and it gives it a really nice flavor because it still has a bit of the molasses in it. After that, I use 12 ounces or three quarters of a pound because they don't even hardly sell pounds anymore of whole bean coffee and I'm using, um, what do I get here? I got Caribou Sumatra Medium Roast. And Remember guys on this, don't buy cheap coffee. It doesn't give the same flavor. The, the darker roasted or at least medium roast quality coffee like Caribou, Starbucks, one of those guys, gives a way better flavor on this. It's what controls the flavor of the drink because basically what you're making is an extracted coffee here when you put this vodka in there and the rum. The quality of the vodka doesn't matter so much. I've tried really good stuff and I've tried this cheap stuff which clocked in at about $5.99 a bottle makes no difference and the rum yeah if you use really cheap junk rum you can taste that especially if it's dark rum clear rum not so much but dark rum yeah so for the next ingredient I used a whole cinnamon stick there's one in here and I also used two whole Mexican vanilla beans now why do you use me Mexican and not Madagascar because Kahlua is traditionally a Mexican drink so I use Mexican vanilla beans I've also zested if you can see it here the nice orange pile on top. I zested one medium orange. I use the scraped style type zester. You want to keep as much pith as possible off the inside of that, that zest because sometimes it can make a bitter or off flavor. So let's pop our demijohn open here or gallon jug and what I have here is one teaspoon of cocoa powder. You can use uh, cacao nibs if you want but I, I like the way it comes out better flavor wise. I think you get a more pronounced coffee sort of chocolate combo edge to it if you use the powder as opposed to the cacao nibs. So we're just going to pop that in there nice and easy. Next we're going to load up. We're going to go into our uh, wet ingredients here. We've got a cup and a half of dark rum. Now you don't have to use the dark rum but I think it gives it a nice flavor edge that you don't get if you only use vodka. Okay so Got that all poured in. See, this is easy, guys. We're pouring stuff into a bottle after collecting ingredients. There's no magic here, uh, witchcraft, voodoo, none of that. So now we're going to pour 750 milliliters or a whole bottle of our vodka into our gallon jug. Now, why are we using a gallon jug? We can use something a little bit smaller, but we're going to need to shake this. And when you use a whole, when you use a gallon jug, you got a lot more area to shake with, right? Right. So, killed our whole bottle. Now, this bottle we can save. Um, if we want to give this to somebody, say you want to give it as a present, a whole bottle of this makes an awesome presentation and it's a cool present that I'd like to get. Um, you know, I usually give out smaller bottles so we can spread the love a little more, but if you make a bigger batch, you can save these 750 milliliter bottles and um, use them to put your present in. Like take the label off and, you know, dress it up a little bit. So, now, we've got all of our ingredients in our jug, as you can see here. So we're going to do something really technical now. We're going to shake it. Now, the reason we're using whole bean coffee and not ground coffee is because if you use ground coffee, it tends to be a real pain in the butt to uh, get out of the bottle later because we're going to have to filter this and you know get our finished product. But there you have it. Real simple. And what I'm going to do is as this, you're going to let this sit for three weeks. And as I go through the three-week stages, we'll take some pictures you know, starting today and show you what it looks like. And I'll be back with you three weeks from now, me. We'll show you filtering and preparing the final product. We'll be back for you in a flash. See you then. Peace. Okay, gang, four weeks has elapsed since the last time I took some video. Um, I didn't video in between, like I said I was in the first video, because as you can see here when I get a little closer, basically you have black liquid with coffee beans floating on the top of it. So really you couldn't see anything but this, so I figured that would be a waste of your time to see black liquid over time. 
Um, now that it's four weeks, it's time to take this and strain it, and um, I guess that's the next step. So we're going to go set up, and I'll show you the straining of this and what we get for the, for the finished product, because that's the goal, isn't it? To get some finished Kahlua. Back in a moment. Okay, gang, I'm back. You can see I got a ton of implements in front of me. We got a pitcher, we got a bottle here, we got a strainer, we've got some uh, sieve, a bunch of different kind of strainers, bowl whatever we can do to collect this out and strain it. What we're going to do is we're going to progressively strain this down. As you can see, we've got like um, pretty open and big to very strained with a triple paper filter here and then a, like sort of a poly mesh filter from like a coffee maker because we've got coffee in here. So that works, doesn't it? Of course it does. Um, one thing I neglected to mention a few moments ago was one of the ways you can tell this is ready is that the coffee beans will look slick on top. And when I got to three weeks, I decided to wait a little bit more because the coffee beans, without being agitated, didn't look slick. They were kind of dry looking. Once they look slick, you can tell at that point that they've really like, absorbed the vodka, gone in and out, did their respirating or whatever they do, and um, have given up their lovely flavor to said vodka. So I'm going to do a little bit of a setup here, and I'll be right back, and we'll get into our straining. Back in a flash. Okay, gang, you can see I got my sieve uh, or my strainer set up here. Nice wire metal basket type strainer. And as you can see, it fits perfectly into our uh, mouth of our pitcher here that we're going to strain our lovely liqueur into or Kahlua, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've also put a pat towel underneath of it. So if I'm pouring it and I get a little too aggressive, it doesn't spill off the side, even though there is a nice metal rim around the edge to catch that. So what we're going to do now, I'm not going to make you sit here while I you know, strain this out. That's boring. Even if you do it in fast motion, nobody wants to watch that crap. So I'm, I put a little bit of a rubber band around the top of this um, uh, uh, cap on my my gallon jug. Why? Because the sugars on here bond this damn cap to the top of the thing a lot of times when I've made it before in the past. And this helps you get a grip and get it popped open. One cool thing I want to show you is when I pop it, sometimes you get a hiss off of like a uh, like soda bottle or a beer bottle when you open it because of the uh, gases that build up in here during the I guess infusion process. So let's see if we can actually get this open. Uh, no, nah, not too much of his. I heard a little tiny one, but you can see all the sugars and stuff that build up in there. So don't forget that rubber band. That's a nice little trick. Makes it easy for you to pop off. So I'm going to get into straining this. Man, I can tell you this though. The smell is freaking awesome. It smells like an iced coffee from here. Wow. <laughs> this is going to be great. So I'll be back in a few minutes after we do our straining. Back in a flash, I guess. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm back. I got my first rendering done, man, and we got a really good yield out of that rendering or that filtering, whatever you want to call it. We got a full 750 milliliters, and that's great for having just put just over a liter of alcohol in with the coffee beans and vanilla uh, beans and cinnamon stick. As you can see, we got a full bowl of our leftovers here, and we're gonna, not going to waste this. Of course, we're going to put this in our compost pile, and maybe we can use that for soil conditioning for when we grow some chilies, man. This would be awesome chili infused. Anyways, the smell coming off of this is what this smells like, and it's rich, rich, like the darkest coffee you can imagine. Deep chocolate, the cinnamon man, vanilla, it smells awesome. So it's a little bit cloudy right now when I hold it up to the light. That's partially because of the sugar and everything in it too, but we're going to filter through here, and as you can see, our coffee filter, what? Fits perfectly in our pitcher that we rinsed out after the last run to get the chunks out, and I'll be back in a flash after I get this next filtering done. Hey gang, I'm back. We've got our filtering through the mesh coffee filter all done. Uh, I went through it three times. That got all the cocoa powder and little coffee grains and everything out of it. We've only lost about a millimeter in height inside the bottle there, so almost nothing. And we're going to go to the next level. We've got three paper coffee filters here connected onto our canning funnel with a rubber band. So we're going to put it through here. This will be the slowest process of it, and this should get it pretty darn clear. When you're going through three layers of paper, that'll take anything that's uh, too big out of it. So I'm going to go through that process, and I'll be back when it's done. <sighs> Yeah. Hey guys, I'm back. We're almost at the end of our homemade Kahlua making road or coffee liqueur making road. And I got it filtered through the uh, triple media or triple uh, paper filters. And um, it took about a half hour to do that. You could do it a little bit faster if you put some pinholes in there. And I think it'll work just as well. And it'll flow down in probably about like 10, 15 minutes, a lot less time. So you know what, we learn something every time we do this process. So it's pretty darn clear. It's always going to be a little bit hazy, remember, when you make this recipe, unless you have some really serious filter packs. Why? 
because when you put cocoa powder in there, it just hazes out the, the uh, liquid a little bit, but it's pretty clear. There's no trub in it, and there's no particulate matter. That's what we want. So I tasted this, and for my taste, it's a little bit too black coffee for a coffee liqueur. So what I did is I took some raw sugar. As you can see, it's kind of a sort of a... I guess off-white color here or caramel color because I use raw sugar and I made simple syrup out of it about a half cup so a half cup of water and a half cup, cup of uh, raw sugar and I'll put the how to make simple syrup you guys probably know but I'll put that down in the notes section so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix this into the bottle here to taste and I'll show you how much I put in extra when I get back I'll be back in a few seconds or at least a few seconds for you okay folks I got the flavor of the uh, Kahlua or coffee liqueur to where I like it. That's the gorgeous thing about making this stuff at home and doing it, you know, like DIY type project because you can make it as sweet or as bitter as you like. Remember, coffee's got that strong bitter flavor. I've dialed this into basically like espresso with sugar in it. That's where I like it. I think it works really well being a little bit more towards the bitter than the sweet end like standard Kahlua is more towards the sweet side. Um, if you want it sweeter, you just add more simple syrup. Um, I added about a half cup of simple syrup into this, so we've got way necking up on the 750, which 750 mils is about here. So, you know, put it up to about there. Um, so full 750 mils now, so let's get a taste and the aroma on this and see what's up in that department, because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Let's get a little half shot of this, because remember, um, you may think, oh, DJ's only having a half shot of Kahlua. That's pretty light. No. Remember, this stuff is... 80 proof, okay? Whereas standard Kahlua is 40 proof. So this is double the alcohol of standard Kahlua. So when I take a look at it, um, eh, there is light coming through it. It's got like sort of some golden amber brown hints coming through it when you swirl it. It's really coating on the inside of the glass, almost like a thick stout beer would be. Let's see what the aroma is. Big coffee, I mean big coffee, like you just brewed a really strong, like double strong espresso. You have orange zest, vanilla, you're getting the cinnamon in there. And I'm surprised how much that orange zest is really plain because I don't think I put that much of it in. I've only put the zest of Warren Orange Man and it's like you've taken an espresso and you put a twist of uh, lemon in your espresso or a twist of orange. So, let's get a taste on it and see what's up in that department. Cheers guys, or salute. Wow, rich, coating, super smooth, big, big coffee flavor from those dark roast, like dark Sumatra roast beans. Wow, it's got enough sweetness that it balances off that bitterness, but to me it's not cloying. If it was more sweet than this, I'd think it, I would call it cloying probably. Now remember, once you add sugar to this, this will amp up slightly over as it sets and, and goes out through the entire bottle when you get a little bit more time on it than what I'm giving it right now. But... For what it is, it goes down super smooth. There's not a real big burn now that we put a little bit of this extra simple syrup in there. That kind of calms that down. And I think it actually tastes less boozy than the store-bought Kahlua. So, guys, super simple to make. The, all the instructions, as always, the recipe and everything will be right down here in the notes section. And if you try this, let me know, and let me know what you think of it. And remember, you can make it taste exactly how you want by two things. One, how long you're leaving it steeping. I wanted more coffee flavor, so I left it an extra week this time. I wanted to see what happened. And, man, it delivered in spades, that extra coffee. And then when I got it out, I said, okay, I want to tame that coffee out with a little bit more sugar. So I got my raw sugar, and I tamed that out. Now we got those lovely caramel notes coming in as I'm talking to you here. Just a superb drink, and this is a great thing to give to friends as a present, and it's something unexpected. So, to the next time, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks a million for watching. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And until then, damn, that's a big peace out!